Hey, this is Wileen Benson, and you are on the Daily Gratitude Call, where we start every day in gratitude. Gratitude is the highest energy state that we can be in. It creates a frequency of positive vibration that attracts positive experiences into our lives. Hey everybody, this is our daily gratitude call. This is Wileen Benson, and we've got uh, a few people on live today. Um, I am um, not going to give a, a lot of preamble this morning about anything. Um, I, I do want to mention before we start the recording, we always do three rounds of breathing and three rounds of gratitude. And um, I have a video that... Um, is it's called how to do your own daily gratitude process i think and um, if you want that video um, or if you want to watch it you can just go to my website and just click on gratitude on the home page and that video is on that page and um, or you can private message me and i'll send it to you anyway um i feel like when we do our breathing exercises we breathe in and out through our nose and I think a lot of times, you know, because we do this every day, it can kind of become commonplace. But today I was really conscious about my breathing and just visualizing that breath going all the way down into not just my lungs, but just filling my whole body up. And then when I push out the ex- exhale, just pushing out anything, any toxins or whatever, you know, that are inside my body that don't need to be there and just really envisioning that energetically happening and what I noticed was that it was almost like an engine, like pistons <laughs> moving up and down. And I just felt like there was this, um, I don't know, it just increased my energy and it just felt like there was something happening in there. And um, the word that came to me is processing. And I feel like that would be a really fun word for us to focus on gratitude today gratitude for processing and uh, like I said we're just going to jump right into our meditation so we're going to I'm going to set the timer for 90 seconds and we're just going to do a private meditation and just write down whatever comes to you on gratitude for processing and we'll see what comes up so gratitude for processing for 90 seconds silent meditation just writing down whatever comes to you begin my phone on do not disturb because the alarm didn't go off but our 90 seconds is done um okay i uh, had just barely started on to kind of a second uh, vein of thought but i'll share with you what the first thing that came to me was my body processing um 
and I just thought of, I just started writing words that came to me about, you know, what happens inside my body when I eat, and then my body is processing that I eat. Um, Some of the words that I wrote down is heat, burning, energy, sloughing off, whatever isn't serving, fat burning. Um, Anyway, I just thought that was interesting that processing, there was like heat and energy and burning and, you know, there was like some activity, like intense. (laughs) Those are intense words. (laughs) Intense activity going on inside of our body that um, we can't see. Uh, most of the time we can't really feel it or even know that it's happening. It's just automatic, but it's, like, intense. <laughs> Who else just joined us? Michael. Hey, Michael. Welcome. We just finished our um, private meditation on gratitude for processing. Who else has something that they'd like to share? Right when you said processing, um there was noises at the door and I thought the dog's in here and that's sort of strange because it's part of his signs that that peaked it and then we realized that the cats were probably out there telling us they were hungry and how that is even a process of, of seeing what is needed and being able to draw it to you and sometimes I think um the communication that they've discovered between a baby sucking on the breast. I guess because Tyree just had a baby, I'm thinking along these things. It processes in your body what is needed, and it draws it from the food and nutrients in your body. And it's it's just sort of a, a cool mechanism we have that we've got to do the best we can, but we can also you know, draw from whatever we eat to to supplement the needs of our bodies. And if we do it with awareness and with the the peak of curiosity, processing is very helpful in just um, a, awareness of of what is needed. Just just help help. I don't know. I'm I'm rambling now, but anyway, I just feel like sometimes it's just creating awareness and and processing what is needful that it really is able to come to you just cool just just that <laughs> one of the things uh well a couple of things that came to me first of all when you're talking about like, like the cats and the dogs and we have three cats and they have their own process like they have certain things they do every day and they have different personalities and you can just predict and um you know, processing is sort of like a system that happens. So that was one thing that came to me. And then you were also mentioning about like helping things along and that your body takes what it needs or whatever. And there are certain foods and certain ways to eat and certain things that we can do that help our process along. Um, There are certain ways that we eat that will put our bodies into a fat-burning mode, you know, so that we're uh, not constantly packing away fat, you know, that we're actually burning the fat. And um, there are certain foods that will kickstart a pancreas or kickstart, you know, your um, like nitric oxide production in your body, you know, to uh, lower blood pressure and things like that. So there are certain things that we can do that will allow our bodies to have access to more of the the perfect and the right foods or, you know, the right, you know, even fresh air and sunshine. We get uh, vitamin D from sunshine. So even going for a walk every day, you know, to um, help that process along. So there are things, choices that we can make, habits that we can put into our lives, sort of like, you know, our cats have habits that we can put habits into our lives that um, give us what we need, that help us to um, get what we need out of life. Who else just joined us? Tyree. Hey, Tyree. Welcome. We were focusing on gratitude for processing. Who else would like to share? I would. Um, You know, the first thing I thought about was, when you said that, was making jam. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Because you're processing. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) 
And then I thought, after I chuckled, I thought, well, because uh, that's what I was thinking, was the energy that we burn during the day with our minds and our hearts and our bodies in a, a different kind of way, not our body processing food, but our minds processing the activities of the day. So it would be like working things out in my mind, um, doing math, that kind of thought feeling clean after a shower, waking up in the morning, starting my day, defragging at night, getting ready for sleep, relaxing, all the things that my body needs um, that are very natural, that are beyond food, but more like the spiritual kind of side, the way it gets revved up and ready to accept like the what I'm going to do for the day, the process it it has in getting ready to accept like spiritual thoughts, uh, preparing to get baptized, um, preparing to go on um, a trip, all those kind of things, that process that goes inside, goes on inside us as we prepare to do something. And that just felt really good because I think that sometimes we don't give ourselves the opportunity to prepare for some activities that we have in our life. And and so we get um, lazy in those areas and we take things for granted. Well, awesome. I love how you um, brought in that um, making jam because... I do a lot of canning. You know, we we grow a garden every year, and I know several of you on this call do. And um, there is a lot of preparation that goes in before you process something. You have to prepare, you know, the tomatoes or whatever it is that you're – you have to prepare the jars. You have to make sure that you've got clean lids to put on and everything. Otherwise, you're going to get moldy – your your stuff will mold or it will even could even get botulism and kill you. <laughs> so there definitely is a lot of preparation that goes in before you process something and even preparing ourselves on the gratitude call, like I mentioned, you know, doing that breathing exercise um, and kind of getting ourselves warmed up and clear and open to receive um, before we begin our gratitude call, and before we jump into our permission process, there needs to be some preparation. Awesome. Thank you. I think I, there was one more person that wanted to share. I was going to say something, and then I um, wanted to share that botulism is real. My grandmother died of that um, food poisoning in a can of, from a can of food. So it's real, so be careful. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> sure. um, so... Yeah, just really be careful. So, um, of course, that was back in the day where they, you know, they didn't have uh, the technology that we have now and the kind of cans and stuff that we have now. But um, I'm grateful for processing things in my mind. I have a little sign at the door. It says, "Think, think, um, keep calm and think it through." So to me, that means process. You know, process it. Um, and to process means to be open to what is available or what's different or what's there. Um, just process from a uh, process thing in your mind. I also thought about um, the process of creating things. I'm grateful that there is a process to it. And something that sometimes we just want to, or I just want to jump in. And it reminds me of my daughter who, who wanted to just, you know, make a shirt. I'm like, well, you got to get a pattern. Nope, I got a shirt here. I'm just going to lay it down on some fabric and trace around it. And 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 so she just, you know, wanted to do her own thing. And so she made a shirt just by doing that. And but there's and it and so it didn't work out perfectly, but it still was great. And I love that she was. Um, she just wanted to jump in and do it. But sometimes following the process or following following directions or pattern or whatever um, is helpful. So process, uh, the process of creating things, um, of learning, the process of learning. So sometimes we have to, you know, it, 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 it behooves us to um, learn uh, from somebody who's been there and done that. And then sometimes it's just a process of learning for ourselves. 
So that, that's a wonderful word. Um, I did a process of elim- uh, uh, an elimination diet to find out what was wrong with my, what was re- my son was reacting to. And out of that process, we found other great things to benefit our lives. So uh, I just thought of a lot of things, so I'm really grateful for that word today. Yeah, thank you. There are a lot of different ways that we can use that word. I thought of our per, um, um, permission process that, um, you know, you're talking about your daughter and not wanting to use a pattern. There is a pattern to our permission process. You know, we recognize when there's a limiting belief and then we examine the cost of that limiting belief. Do we want to keep it? Or do we want to give ourselves permission to choose something different? And then once we give ourselves permission, then we can choose into those new beliefs and then we want to integrate those new beliefs and really take them into ourselves. So there's, you know, there definitely is a process to do that. You know, we could just jump in and say, well, I'm just going to believe this, you know, but we maybe haven't examined the cost of it and so it doesn't last very long because we don't realize the effect that the old beliefs were having on us and so it's like, you know, we kind of slip back into those old patterns. So there are, um, you know, reasons for different things. And once you get the process down, you know, if, if say, you know, somebody was sewing and, you know, they'd had a couple of years of instruction where they were using patterns and they kind of understood the, the process of what happens, you know, within the pattern, then, um, then you know, you can just lay a shirt, <clears throat> shirt down, cut it out, and sew it together, and you know to sew the right sides together, and you know, you know that has to be just a little bit bigger, you know, in some areas and smaller in some areas, and and that want it straight across the bottom, or do I want the back lower, or whatever? And you can make some changes because you have taken the time to learn the process, you know, um, the proper process, and then you can make your ad- adaptations to it based on you know intuition or whatever. So the process is really powerful, and then also I love the idea that you suggested, you know, with bringing intuition into it and choice and saying, you know what, I'm going to do it this way this time. It might be, it might turn out great, and I might have some mistakes, but I'm going to learn from it. So I just awesome. would add to that the one thing that is coming up for me just kind of sums it all up. It's just the process of how thought become things, how we you know, thinking about things and then creating from that just thoughts are things, but there's a process that goes from the thinking to the creating. Yeah, you're right, definitely. And this is a great opportunity for us to shift over to that permission process because that's one of the things that we do is really get clear with, you know, what is it that we want? And uh, once we're clear on that, that's, you know, we can focus on that, and, and you're right. Thoughts do become things. The, everything starts in the imagination. Everything is spiritually created first before it's physically created. So let's go ahead and take a deep breath. And with regard to this word process or processing, Let's just be open to just allow your mind, your heart, your spirit to be open and allow yourself to process through whatever it is that you're going to be processing today. And the question I have for you is, what is the number one limiting belief that would keep you from your greatness? the number one limiting belief that would keep you from being the best that you can be. Let's just take a moment and acknowledge it, and then we're going to be processing through it. And as you look at that limiting belief, I invite you to examine the cost of it. If you keep that limiting belief, or actually, what is that? What does that limiting belief cost you already? What does that? What outcome has that limiting belief brought you? What are you experiencing in your life right now because of this limiting belief?
And as you look at that cost, as you look at the consequences that that limiting belief has brought you, I invite you to make a choice right now. Do you want to keep that limiting belief and continue receiving that outcome? Or do you want to give yourself permission to try on a new belief? And if you're willing to let go of that old limiting belief and put a new belief into action, then I invite you to say yes. 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 So what are those new beliefs? Let's invite you to share three new beliefs that will, or write down three new beliefs that will take the place of that old limiting belief and then will allow you to have a different outcome. And as you look over those new beliefs, I invite you right now to really take those new beliefs in. Allow those new beliefs to be processed inside of you. And just as we've been talking about things that you can bring into your body, like food, that there are certain things you can bring into your body that increase the the ability for your body to process, that increase the strength, the energy, um, the uh, just the ability to process in a way that is beneficial to you. These new beliefs are things that would be very beneficial to bring into your body, into your mind, into your life, and allow those new beliefs to be processed in a way that they become part of you. As you just breathe these new beliefs in and, and close your eyes and imagine and just envision that these new beliefs are maybe as soon as they hit your heart, that they are pumped out just like the blood is pumped out to every extremity, to every nerve, to every part of your body. Just allow these new beliefs to be pumped out into every single cell in your body so that it is healing you, is making you whole, is bringing light and growth Prosperity, abundance, peace, joy, gratitude, all of these things being brought to every single cell of your body, being carried with the natural processes that our bodies have. And just allow these new beliefs to communicate to every single cell of your body your mind and your heart and your soul, that this is who you choose to be right now, that you've given yourself permission to level up, to change, to be a new person with these new beliefs as part of who you are. And as you feel those new beliefs becoming part of you, I invite you to Be open to know what the one thing that you could do today that will really anchor in these new beliefs and allow you to move forward confidently to totally leave behind that old limiting belief that is no longer part of you and that you're stepping fully into this new person that you've become. What is the one most important thing that you can do today to prove to yourself that these new beliefs have become integrated into your body, mind, and soul? What is your inspired shortcut to being this person today? take a couple minutes to share. Um, My new beliefs are, I have plenty of time. I love my life. My life is perfect. And my next step is to follow my heart and do what I feel today. Who else would like to share? Um, 
I'd, I would. I, I'd like to um, continue to remind myself of my significance, mm. to believe in me, to be and to have faith in me. And when I do all of those things, then I will be the best I am. Awesome. And I'll be happy with that. Yeah. Awesome. And what's one thing you can do, Ruby, today, one tangible thing that would really anchor in this idea of being significant? Open my heart. All right. Well, we are going to go ahead and end our call today. Um, I appreciate everything that everybody has shared. And I invite you to go to our break, our Breakthrough with Gratitude Facebook group and share on that page any thoughts that you've had during the call or if you're listening on the recording to um, share with us what your thoughts are. We'd love to be able to support you in your transition, in your transformation of integrating these new beliefs into your life processing everything that you've learned and having it become part of you. Um, If you are struggling with any of these uh, thoughts or suggestions that have been made today, I invite you to reach out to me on askwileen.com. It just goes right to my calendar and you can choose a 15-minute time slot to meet with me. And that's a free call. Um, We'd just love to help you process through whatever it is that you're experiencing. And whether it's something that came up on this call today or if tomorrow you are triggered by something and you're like, ah, I don't want to be triggered by this anymore. I want to just find out where this is coming from. Just get on askwileen.com and we'll talk about it. <laughs> well, thank you all for being on the call today. Um, we look forward to um, being together again tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. And Mountain Time. And I invite you to continue processing today and uh, thanks for, for sharing yourself with, with us today on the Gratitude Call. Thank you. Thank you, Eileen. Bye. Hey, thanks so much for listening. And I encourage you to tune in every day to the Daily Gratitude Call. And the Daily Gratitude Call happens live every weekday morning. I'd love to have you join. So to find out how to join live, go to my website, WileenBenson.com. Thanks for tuning in.